The Black Keys run tight back, run right back. We've got Sipan 97.0. The Uni Loves Lunchroom with me. Still here with Miss Pelenum, Pamela Nomfleta. Wow. Okay. So we've been having a couple of conversations <laughs> off air. They, they kind of threw me off a bit. But uh, let's see if we can get this thing back on track. So the main reason that uh, the UFS Library brought you to join us is you have a book. Yes. Dancing to the Beat of the Drum That's in right. Search of My Spiritual Home. Yeah. All I know is that it's an autobiography of the life. That's <laughs> 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 so pretty much as much as I can say. I haven't read it. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I would love to elaborate on it, but I can't. Tell I just know it's an autobiography. That's all they they, yeah. they got me. Yeah. So what 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 is uh, that entail? Okay. Well, I mean, it's it is an autobiography, um, but. It's quite interesting hearing people's responses, those people that have read it, yeah. hearing their responses to it. Um, because I think people expected one thing yeah. and they kind of got something else. <laughs> <laughs> Flip the script on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because, of course, you know, why would one write a book? Especially if you've never written a book in your entire life. Yeah. Um, it's not an easy feat. Um, it's something I would never, ever have contemplated doing. It wasn't part of the plan. You know Just what I mean? Me, yeah. And then um, as I was sort of uh, unbundling my life, um, it suddenly occurred to me that I think I do need to put it down. Uh, and the reason for that is the same reason as we've been uh, touching on earlier, is that I think if, if one is ever going to feel that you've had a, wife, a life worth living, it's that you're able to um, uh, carry out certain things that are going to allow for humanity to grow. You know, you hope that whatever experiences that you've had are not going to go to waste, right. that you can always do something with it that's going to mean that you empower even one person. And I do think that comes from my theatrical background yeah. and as, a, as an actor, <laughs> yeah. where I was taught um, when art was still pure. I'm sorry, I'm really talking like an old... <laughs> in my day. No, we need it. We, we, need, it. we need a little bit of that wisdom. <laughs> Most welcome, yeah. You know, it was... Uh, we, you, you sort of were going into acting because you were thinking, yes, I want to make a difference and... If I tell this story with my character, it might just touch, you know, you've got lecturers saying yeah. it's going to touch one person in the audience, and that's why you're doing it. Right. Um, so I guess in terms of the book, I was at that stage, because I don't know if many people know. Um, like I said, you know, I'm trying to work out how you knew me, because you couldn't have been born, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we read. As, as, as we don't know it enough, but we read. We read. <laughs> And um, at that time, yes, I was quite uh, prominent here in South Africa. You know, that role did take the country by storm, took me by storm too. Yeah. Um, and, you know, having all that kind of attention and the strange arena we were in. Because the other thing about it is that at that time, people forget that the country was going through this enormous transition. Yeah. So personal lives were also caught up in this vortex as you're trying to find, you know, the country was trying to find its identity. Yeah. Individuals are trying to find their identity. Um, yeah, you it's know. A transitional period. Hugely. Yeah. Um, and in the process, we were getting lost because things weren't sure and, you know, there was a kind of wild euphoria. Um, and, of, uh, and of course, lots of personal crises were occurring. Yeah. Um, and I found myself in personal crises. Um, I'm not really going to go into it much, yeah. but what happened is that it got to the point where I went from being uh, this huge uh, public figure, celebrity, suddenly my acting status, my artist yeah. status had suddenly disappeared, which I think was partly the pain of it, um, because the fact that I was an actor and an artist was somehow forgotten. You know, it was more about being this celebrity, right? right? right yeah. uh, and this was in my heart. So I thought, well, my creative life is dying. <laughs> I'm not being fulfilled creatively. Yeah. Right? Um, so I think that had a lot to do with it as well. But anyway, as I say, having gone through that, so I went from this 
huge public figure to someone who lost everything. I did not only lose uh, things materially, yeah. but I, I lost my pride. Um, I'd gone into a very destructive relationship. Um, I'd lost a sense of my own identity. I'd lost my voice. I'd lost everything. Um, and I ended up broke and homeless. Uh, and I lived in my car for about uh, two weeks in Johannesburg. In a, in a petrol station yes. because they were kind enough to let me park there. Um, so I've got this thing about <laughs> I, I have this nostalgia about petrol stations. They saw you when nobody else was there. <laughs> exactly. And they're, they're like my best friends, you know. Yeah. I go to petrol, to petrol stations, hi guys, and they're, I'm always really friendly. Yeah. So I always make friends and they don't realise it's because I'm going, you this saved is, my life. There's a story behind that. Yeah. yeah, and they do. I mean, they saved my life and I mean that um, it was an extraordinary experience from being in a place where I got to the point where I didn't really like this country that was supposed to be mine yeah. anymore you know? nice. and then it was when I was on those streets and these yeah. ordinary people you have no idea <laughs> that I mean the quality of the heart of the ordinary South African, which means it, it must be our heart, is, it, it's, it's just second to none. I'm still, you know, I still get all weird and emotional. <laughs> and that is what made me fall in love with South Africa again. I thought, no, there is an amazing spirit in this country. Yeah. Um, because these people, you know, I was famous. It wasn't as if they didn't know me. And they could yeah. see, like, you know, in your well, car see. and your, you know, and you don't seem to be able to eat. So we yeah. people, and I knew, they, for example, you know, people suddenly in, in knocking on the window in my car and giving me um, co a coffee or, or or a pie yeah. that they bought because they're like, we see that you need this. Yeah, and I knew for them, I thought, but that's probably your transport money. And you're willing to feel. I mean, it was, and it really, it was real in that sense. Um, so, in a crazy kind of way, that was one of the most profound experiences in my life. You know, yeah. it was, it, and the most golden. I treasure it. Understandably. <laughs> of course, I isn't can, it? One can imagine. It's when we're at our worst sometimes yeah, that right. you find the true meaning of, of one's existence, and suddenly life is beautiful extraordinary that's in the places where people expect it wouldn't be yeah. but that is where i saw the purity of it and i guess it's because also you know that whole idea of what we identify ourselves with yeah. i didn't have wealth anymore right. um i was no longer in the public i stopped working which is why i ended up in the street because i just couldn't stand the industry i was also ducking from <laughs> my ex <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> incredibly intense but yeah. so short you know right. it was only really I would say well no my 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 pain and um, the sort of destructive elements that were coming into being in my life were pretty much throughout the period of being here let's see from about like when Nsiki really became huge it was kind of, <laughs> I suppose 96 ish wasn't it? 97. Yeah, right about those so times. I would say from 97 to the year 2000, when I left, because actually I left in the year 2000, by the way, because people think that yeah. it's now, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I left a long time ago. I left generations in 2000. And then after that, all those things, you know, like things like uh, Zulu Love Letter I did, yeah. was in that period. Wow. Uh, uh, um, nothing but the truth, the play. Yeah. So I was working doing great work after generation, generation but of course people don't see it they're like yeah, no people you people have that idea <laughs> we know her as we see nobody exactly. else right so you left generations and that's when you left the country and no that's not true i left generations long before i left the country but that whole period was crisis yeah. in my life i was going through a crisis yeah. that very short period of now, having got to the point of being destitute emotionally yes. and, and materially, um, was short, but it was a lifetime 
of experience in that moment. That is true. And that was, in fact, the birthing of my purpose, um, right. where I thought, yeah, you know. It's Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, okay. Whoa, okay. My producer just had me a piece of note. What motivational quotes do you live by daily? Via Facebook from Frank Marope. It's a question. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I didn't, I would have prepped you. I didn't even know this was coming. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, the thing is, though, there's so many. Um, because one of the, a, a lot of you may have heard, because I talk about it all the time. Yeah. is that one of the discoveries I've made in my life that I also treasure is that I'm an Ishra Buddhist, so yeah. I practice Buddhism. Oh, yeah. And my uh, mentor, a, a man called Daisaku Ikeda, every day we, we have these little books that are words of encouragement. Yes. So I kind of take my encouragement from, from that, so it's daily. So I wouldn't say there's one particular one, right. but I suppose um, one that might come to mind is that it takes um, it takes one human being to have a human revolution in themselves, and that revolution that they uh, have within themselves is the very thing that can change a community, a nation, a society. So it takes a change in one human being that can translate into the change of a society and the environment. Um, and I think that's true. I think we very, all know that's true. Very, very, very. It and lies within you, the person. Absolutely. And I think, and, and exactly. And I, what I love about folks like that is that, oh, I'll tell you another one I do quite <laughs> like, but this is not so pretty. Um, <laughs> not so positive. But before I give you that one, yeah. um, what I love about the, the quote I just I just uh, mentioned was that it that's everybody. Right. That can be absolutely anybody. You know, True. each one of us can do that. Each one of us can can be great uh, sort of um, it, it, people who effect change. Yes. It can happen today, tomorrow, with you, with me, with this any, amazing woman. Any, any individual. And any individual. That's what that's about. It's like, oh, we're not going to wait for the one. <laughs> and everybody is the one in this case. Exactly. Everybody's the one. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> Heavy D is giving me a hard time. Time is not on our side. All right. You can catch up with Miss Pamela Nombreto today uh, at 4 o'clock at the Albert Vessels, the OK today at the University of Free State. You can get uh, the, the big man, Mr. Marcus Mapile, told me the vouchers are going to be there. You can get a copy of the book there. Wow. Dance to the beat of. Dance to the beat of the drum. Yeah, that's it. And, yeah, yeah. in search of my spiritual home. It almost escaped me right there. Thank you very much for, for spending your time with us. Thank it, you it, so it much. Is, I cannot put it into words how much we appreciate it. It's been amazing. It's been. A learning experience of a lifetime, to say the very oh, least. You, so, you. all the best in your endeavors. Hope to meet you again in the very near future, and all the best. Don't remember, don't forget, National Library Week today ends tomorrow. Pick up a book, return it to the library if you haven't done already. Read a book, expand your knowledge, people. Wow. Great.